Resto Mod 101. Hey, welcome back to Resto Mod 101. Today, we're going to try to do an upgrade to our Jet 8 inch industrial bench grinder. We love this thing, we use it all the time. We even got the LED work light with it. One thing we didn't really like is on the end of the wire of the work light was one of these little dial switches to turn it on. What I'm going to try to do is just wire this light directly to the power switch. So when you flip this, grinder comes on, light comes on, time to get to work. Let's see if we can get it done. All right, first thing you're going to want to do is obviously take the light down. So uh, we can just take these two screws out, this one here, and then this one up here. And that'll let us remove the entire light. I'm also going to loosen this plate here, just in case I need to have a little more play with this cable. Uh, that'll make life a little easier than having to flip the whole thing back over in order to uh, loosen that wire up. All right. Okay, so you have a couple ways of doing this. Uh, you're obviously getting 120 volts coming into this light fixture. And since it's an LED light, you can't just run 120 to it. That's why it has this little wall ward on it. So we could buy uh, something to put within the line, or we could just try to use this wall wart inside the machine. So we'll see if it'll fit. Okay, we've turned our machine over. We're looking at the bottom of the machine. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take these four foot pads out with the screws because it's holding this bottom plate in. Set those aside. And then after these four foot pads, you have two more screws you need to take out. Uh, there's one right here. We'll keep those screws with the foot pads so we can keep them straight. All right, and now this bottom plate should come off. Great. Uh, what's good news is we've got plenty of room in here. I think we'll be able to get this done. All right, so here's the power cable coming in and it runs uh, straight to your switch. And then when you flip your switch on, uh, that power continues to these two leads, which is where we're going to want to wire our light up to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole right in here, run the cable through, and connect it to these two leads. Now, the issue is that you'd have 120 volts going straight to that light, which mm -hmm. won't work. Did you just fart? <laughs> Dude, I'm trying to do some work, and you're, like, crop dusting me. What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> That is so stinkery. <laughs> oh, dude, that smells terrible. I can't believe you just... Oh, buddy. That is awful. The fart smell is still there. <laughs> it sure is. Oh, you're awful. All right, we'll be right back. Uh, also, when you're removing the uh, actual switch that was already on the wire, it's going to have fragmented the wire a little bit because obviously you have two connectors that are going through the insulation and touching the wire connection. So I'm actually gonna cut that portion of the wire out as well. And same on this side. All right, extend our leads a little bit. All right, next step. All right, we're ready to drill the hole for the wire coming off the light. I'm gonna go ahead and use a punch to get a little divot that my drill bit can sit in. I want to center it up with the holes for the bracket because that wire comes down right through those. So I'm going to put this here and give it a couple of punches. That gives a nice little divot that the drill bit can sit in. I found this great little grommet. It's a wide wall grommet. This is a pretty thick base, so I need a wide wall grommet that I can slip my uh, cable through. So that should work out perfectly. Use some calipers to measure it out. It came out to just about uh, 27 64 So that's the drill bit I got. Uh, this is going to take some time to drill through, so, I don't know, get popcorn or go watch another YouTube video. No, don't watch another YouTube video. Watch this till the end so you can rate it and subscribe so we can keep making these. But this is going to be pretty boring for a while. All right, I'm almost through, so I'm being very careful that I don't end up jamming the drill bit right into everything that's inside here. So I just take it uh, nice and slow at this point. You can already see that there's an opening there. I just haven't hit that full circumference yet. There we go. All right, I just turned the grinder back up on its side here so we can see into the bottom. Uh, the reason I didn't drill the hole in this position is because I didn't want all those metal shavings to potentially fall in our motor and cause havoc. So. By having it uh, sitting upright and drilling sideways, I knew all those shavings would fall to the bottom and land on my work surface. All right, next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our plug and wire that came with our light, and I'm going to snake it through the hole we just drilled. There we go. 
And obviously we're gonna not keep this entire length of cable. But what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna run this through our grommet and then push our grommet into place. And if you're having a little trouble with getting the grommet through, you can always use a little bit of uh, food grade silicone that definitely makes things a little slicker. That stuff's great, man, that's slicker than dog snot. All right, here we go. And now we can push this grommet into place and we have some room to wire here. Now you're probably wondering, well, how am I going to get this plug connected to these two wires? Well, there's a hack. Find an old crappy extension cord. You're gonna plug this into here. We've cut the extension cord in half and now we're gonna wire these two into here. And there should be plenty of room for both of these inside the bottom of the unit. Pretty tricky. Uh, what you can do now is go ahead and slide part of the grommet in, you know, uh, one edge. And then just use kind of a flat or round all, it's nothing with too much of a point, you don't wanna damage your grommet and use that to push the other corners in. And it's gonna be a little bare. It's gonna be tight because you already got the wire in there. But uh, this is easier than trying to get that wire to feed through and then having it pull the grommet out as you're trying to pull your cable through. And just make sure when you're turning it, you keep the bottom edge down. There we go. Then you can go in from underneath and also make sure that that grommet is sitting flat all the way through on the other side. Take maybe a little flat blade screwdriver, make sure the edges are all the way through. There we go, nice and tight. Might actually even put a dab of uh, silicone in there just to make it kind of airtight so we're not getting any debris through that opening. All right, moving on. All right, so last step, uh, we need to obviously wire this to these two uh, connections. And you're kind of wondering, okay, well, which one goes to what? So the way you can figure that out is if you look at your plug from the other end of your extension cord, you have obviously two prongs. You got a skinny prong and a fat prong. The skinny prong is always black, right? So that's hot, right? So that's the skinny prong. So then you can look at your wires. They'll either be uh, marked with some type of stamp on them. Uh, this one actually, one has grooves and one is smooth. So I know the smooth one is going to black. That's our hot lead. So I know from here, the smooth wire is going to hot or black and the striped wire is going to neutral. All right, let's hook them up. Well, now we need to do the same thing for the wires coming off the bottom of the switch. Unfortunately, they're both marked black, so it does, it's not a clear indication which one is your neutral and which one is your hot. Your line coming in is clearly marked, right? You have your green uh, ground, your black hot, and your white neutral. So we could assume that this line here, which is sitting on the same side of the switch as this neutral, is going to be the neutral. But with uh, electricity, assuming is about as bad of an idea as a one-legged man entering an ass-kicking contest. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually test the switch just to make sure where our continuity is coming through. So what we'll do is we'll unplug these leads because continuity could travel through the motor. We need to unplug just three of them. Uh, we'll leave them laying next to the correct placement so we know where they go back to. And what we'll do is we'll put our multimeter in continuity mode and we'll touch these two leads and we'll see if we get contact or get uh, tone. Now mind you, we gotta flip the switch to have that continuity go through. So we got these two connected on this side. Turn the switch on. And we have our continuity tone, right? Now we could try to see if we would do the same thing on this side and we get no tone. So we know these two are both going to be the neutral. Bam. All right, let's put these connections back on before they get moved. And now we can wire this thing up. All right, let's do it. A little heat shrink tubing. All right, so we'll reattach uh, a little plate for the power lead. I already pulled uh, this cable at nice and Threaded. I wanted to leave a little space because, you know, this light does angle down. I don't want to put too much tension on this cable. So give it a little play in there. And then we'll put this guy on too. All right. And now let's attach the bottom plate. I'm going to tuck this in right here. So next thing, uh, let's set this upright because obviously when you're turning it on to test it, it's going to operate the grinder. So if you have it laying down, that, that could be really bad. 
But because it's heavy, it tells you it's good quality. That's not some light little motor in there. All right, let's fire it up, plug it back in. Obviously, whenever you're working on it, you want to make sure it's unplugged. Pull our face shields away. Oh, look at that. One switch operation. Love it. I can't tell you how many times I've walked out to the garage and uh, seen that I had left this light on. So, uh, super happy about this. Um, if you like the video, please like, please subscribe. We need all the support we can get so we can keep making these. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment box. And on to the next Resto Mod 101. Thanks. Resto Mod 101.